everybody. Hello from Londonist. Today we're in front of you with a different concept. So we're going to walk around the beautiful St. Catherine's Dog, the beautiful, beautiful St. Catherine's Dog around the Tower Bridge. And actually you're going to hear much more detailed information about this beautiful place. And we're just going to be wandering around. I'm just going to be looking outside. I'm not going to be talking about the 10 packs today. And I hope you'll enjoy it at the end of this video. Mwah. Let's go together. Situated on the east side of Tower Bridge is a little oasis of calm, where the boat and pedestrian is king and cars are firmly out of sight and mind. Many tourists don't even know there's a relaxing place to eat, shop and drink just moments from the Tower of London. Over 180 years after it was opened, St. Catherine's Dock is still hosting boats, as well as being a place to live and be entertained. The River Thames has always been of huge importance to trade and business in London. After all it is, the river that helped the Romans decide where to set up camp and found Londinium. The access to the sea via the Thames estuary made it an attractive prospect. Although we don't use the river half as much as generations of Londoners before us, the waterways of the capital remain a big draw with tourists and locals for scenic reasons to escape the frantic city. The name St. Catherine's dates back to a medieval church and hospital, which was founded on the site in the 12th century. Over the years, the population swelled with around 3,000 people living in St. Catherine's, which had its own court, school and almshouses by the late 18th century. However, with the country's world trade booming, there was growing demand for more dogs at to ever-expanding Pool of London. St. Catherine's Dog soon became popular for sugar, rum, tea, species, perfumes, ivory, shells, marble, indigo, wine and brandy arriving from Europe, Asia, Africa and the Caribbean. Today, one of the only existing warehouses is named Ivory House, a nod to the former dog's trading history. Being an important part and port of London, and the proximity to Tower Bridge and the Tower of London, St. Catherine's Dock ended up being a target of Nazi bombers during the Blitz. Following the war, the docks were left in a runny state before they were closed by the Port of London Authority in 1968. After largely being neglected for years, some of the old quayside warehouses were demolished in the 70s to make way for the Tower Gilman Hotel. Across the various warehouses and buildings feature a range of restaurants and bars with many offering waterside dining. One big draw within the docks is the Dickens Inn, a pub, grill and pizzeria. Although it was opened in the 70s, the inn is a reconstruction of an 18th century inn using timber and ironwork salvaged from an 18th century wooden warehouse which stood 70 meters away. It was opened by Charles Dickens' grandson, Cedric Charles Dickens, in May 1976. A popular activity is the medieval banquet, which provides entertainment, food and drink in an Old England style. Among the many restaurants on site include Cote Brasserie, Ping Pong, Tom's Kitchen, Zizi and Mala's Indian Restaurant. One particularly aesthetically pleasing building is a rotunda currently housing a Starbucks branch. It was built in the 70s and originally housed a Perspex sculpture to mark Queen Elizabeth's II's Silver's Jubilee. The piece of Perspex was originally commissioned by film director Stanley Kubrick in 1968 for his iconic movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's the largest solid block of arc lake in the world, weighing 2 tons and nearly 11 feet long. However, Kubrick ended up rejecting it in favor of a black basalt monolith. Nine years later, it was used by sculptor Arthur Fleischmann, who carved a crown in the material to mark the Jubilee. The rotunda named Coronium Chapelle was built to house it, with the Queen unveiling it on 5th of June 1977. However, the piece was moved to the north wall of Juman Hotel in 2000, with the chapelle becoming roofed and now housing the coffee branch. Thanks to you all that I did one of the best things that one can do in London in a sunny day to actually walk around this place. I hope you're going to have a sunny and free day in London and I hope you can come to this place and to just feel the vibe of the place. It feels like there is just like a little Portofino in London city itself. I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next video of Londonist. Take care.